Hello everybody, I'm Daniel, the Cross-Cultural Nerd. I'd like to bid you all welcome to my inaugural video. Let me start off by telling you a little bit about myself. I grew up in the American state of Kentucky and I went to university in the state of Tennessee, majoring in anthropology with minors in Spanish and Asian studies. During my time in university, I took a couple of cross-cultural trips to Chile and China and fell in love with both countries. After getting my degree, I came to China's Hunan province for two years as an international student in a Mandarin certification program. And then afterward, I got a job in Luoyang as a foreign teacher teaching English at a university here. So far, I've been in China for a little over five and a half years, and I've enjoyed my life here for the most part. I even met my wife here. I've been fascinated with other countries, cultures, and languages ever since I was a kid. I am very happy to have had an academic career and a big portion of my life focusing on those aspects. I'm also a huge nerd and have long been a fan of gaming, science fiction, fantasy, and the like. Through this channel, I hope to share my love of all these things with you guys watching out there. Now, this channel is going to feature a few things. First, I'll be talking about a lot of things pertaining to a wide variety of places around the world. Interesting locations, cultural practices, linguistics, history, geopolitics, and the like. I definitely hope to educate my fellow Americans, but my videos are open to all people from everywhere. Fair warning, you are going to hear a lot about China. I've been here for the better part of my 20s, so I've got a lot of things to go on and talk about. But I will be bringing up things about other countries as well. Secondly, I'll also have a lot of content pertinent to gaming, science fiction, fantasy film, television series, literature, and whatnot. Nerd fandom, if you will. Gaming, as you may know, has been popular for decades now. Also, thanks to franchises such as Star Wars, The Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, the Marvel and DC films of the last decade or so, science fiction, fantasy, and comics are more popular than ever. And more recent hits, like the online series Critical Role, made by Geek and Sundry, have helped bring tabletop games like Dungeons & Dragons to unprecedented levels of prominence. I hope to share the love of such things with you guys. Finally, I plan to put some focus on where nerd culture and the cultures of the world intersect. People in North America and Western Europe and Japan, in many regards, are used to their own series influencing the entertainment of the world. But we don't often really know how other places view the series and films that we know and love. And many films and series in other countries rarely, if ever, see the light of day in our own corners of the world. I'd love to explore how international fans enjoy our favorite franchises, as well as bring some of the popular films, series, games, and so on in other countries more into the public eye in our own stomping grounds. I should also note that I'm going to do my best to keep this channel as religiously and politically neutral as possible. So, <clears throat> unless, of course, it would be nearly impossible to do so. Such situations would include discussing certain geopolitical scenarios like uh, Sino-Japanese relations or something like that, or the criticism that certain games have gotten from Christians and other religious groups. I, by the way, I do plan to cover that in a future video, so stay tuned. However, I will not comment on things such as my own personal stances on certain political figures in the U.S. or Brexit or whatnot. Any requests for such stances will be completely ignored. I'm looking forward to doing this, and I'm hoping that you viewers out there will enjoy yourselves as we embark on this together. Now... For my first topic, I'd like to give you a little picture of where I've been spending the last several years. China. Well, not all of China, that's far too large. Uh, more specifically, Henan Province. In the West, we hear all the time about Beijing, Shanghai, maybe some stuff about Guangzhou and Shenzhen, etc. Uh, the major Chinese areas that we hear in the 21st century. I've even heard some Chinese people say that if you come to China and you don't go to Beijing or Shanghai, you have not seen China. I have a counter to this perspective. If you come to China and you only see Beijing and Shanghai, you have not seen the real China. 
no one could credibly claim that by visiting only London, they'd fully seen England. Likewise, no one could really claim that by seeing only Los Angeles and New York, they'd see all of what America has to offer. China's heartland has a ton of things to offer, and Hunan really is a great place to see, especially if you like history. China is one of the oldest countries on the planet, and Chinese civilization itself was born in Hunan. What is now northern Hunan province was known to the Neolithic Yangshao and Longshan cultures. The semi-legendary Yellow Emperor, or Huangdi, is said to have been born in the town of Xinjiang, south of Zhengzhou. Before all of China was united, the Xia dynasty, which is regarded as semi-legendary, and the Shang dynasty were all focused in and around Hunan. Multiple Hunan cities like Anyang, Shangqiu, Yanshi, and Zhengzhou served as Shang dynasty capitals. The Zhou dynasty came from Shanxi to the west and conquered the Shang, and the capital moved to the city of Chang'an, which we now know as Xi'an, where the terracotta warriors are. The capital of the Zhou switched between, between Chang'an and Luoyang in Hunan province. Qin Shi Huang united China under the short-lived Qin dynasty, but from the rise of the Han dynasty until the Mongols founded the Yuan dynasty, Hunan cities, Luoyang in particular, served as Chinese capitals. Luoyang itself was either the eastern capital or the capital of around 13 different dynasties in its history. This is a major source of local pride. Xichang was the base of the famous leader Cao Cao until he founded the Kingdom of Wei during the Three Kingdoms period, during which Romance of the Three, Three Kingdoms takes place. After the Tang Dynasty fell, Kaifeng was a capital during much of the Five Dynasties and Ten Kingdoms period, as well as the capital of the Northern Song Dynasty. After the Mongols conquered China and founded the Yuan Dynasty, they moved the capital east to what would be later known as Beijing. Hunan stayed important during the next couple dynasties, but the, Easter, the eastward movement of political power and commerce, combined with a series of natural disasters, would lessen the prominence of Hunan. The province was hit very hard in World War II, between the Japanese invasion and a massive famine that occurred in 1942. The capital briefly returned to Luoyang during the war, after Japan had captured Beijing and Nanjing and many other major cities. After the war, the communists took over in 1949. Soon after, the first People's Commune was founded in Hunan. Natural disasters and another famine would continue to reduce Hunan's prominence until, by the 1970s, it was one of the poorest provinces in China. In the 1990s, the economy began to bounce back. While the reputation as an economic backwater still lingers, the last couple decades have seen rapid growth. The provincial capital of Zhengzhou is one of the most prominent rail hubs in China. Foreign investment is increasing, and the sheer number of historical places here brings in a great bit of tourism. Today, Hunan has a population of over 95 million residents, the third largest in China of any province. However, the Hukou household registration system lists 103 million, the most in China, as many Hunan people leave for work in other provinces, contributing to Guangdong and Shandong's larger resident populations. In short, Hunan's actual population is third in China, but it still produces the most people of any province. 98.8% of the population are Han Chinese, while another 1% are of the primarily Muslim Hui ethnic group. Hunan also has the highest percentage of Christians of any Chinese province at almost 7%. Buddhism has also enjoyed a very long history. The first Buddhist temple in China, the White Horse Temple, is in Luoyang. The Shaolin Temple in Dengfeng, was the birthplace of Zen Buddhism and Shaolin Kung Fu, which is world famous. E economically, Hunan is the breadbasket of China, producing the most wheat and sesame and third most rice in the country, as well as a lot of beef, pork, cotton, and corn. 
Mining is also a very prominent industry here, with coal, aluminum, tungsten, and the world's second largest reserves of molybdenum bringing in lots of revenue. The service industry, however, is rather underdeveloped and mostly concentrated in Zhengzhou and Luoyang. Hunan has several prominent cities. Zhengzhou is the capital, the most important commercial center, and, again, one of the biggest hubs for, the ra for railways in China. Luoyang, in the west, is the next biggest economic center and the most prominent historical city, as well as a national center for the peony flower, often viewed as one of the national flowers of China. Kaifeng in the east is another former capital with a rich history and a street food market to rival those of Beijing and Xi'an. Anyone who's been to those places knows what I'm talking about. At their peaks, Luoyang and Kaifeng were once the largest cities in the world. Dongfeng is home to the Shaolin Temple and the nearby Mount Song or Songshan. Songshan is one of the five great mountains of China. Jiaozuo in the north is the birthplace of the martial art Tai Chi and home to Yuntai Mountain or Yuntai Shan, one of the first ever UNESCO World Geoparks. Shangqiu in the east is the birthplace of the great philosophers Zhuangzi and Mozi, and the as well as the female warrior Hua Mulan, or Mulan, as is more widely known thanks to the Disney animated film. Shangqiu also has the Ming Dynasty era Suiyang Old City, one of the best preserved traditional cities in China. Xinyang, in the south, is one of the most prominent growers and distributors of tea in China, and is home to a couple of the, of the greatest brands of green tea. Many other cities in the province are locally known for historical fame or for industry. Hunan gets a lot of criticism and just a lot of general crap from the more affluent regions, but it still has a lot to offer. I hope this brief portrait of the region encourages you to find out more, and I hope you can come visit the area someday. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I'd also encourage you to follow my page on Facebook and my Twitter at x cultural nerd, because Twitter's character limits on usernames on there are rather restrictive. If you have any questions about this video, about me, or about any other topics you'd like me to talk about, or just general feedback, please comment below. I will read any and all comments that you post, and I will keep them in mind for the future. As my schedule permits, I'll be posting at least a couple of times per week. May this inaugural installment be the first of many and I look forward to you joining me again next time. I'm Daniel, the Cross-Cultural Nerd. See you later.